As of April 2020, a total of 3.81 billion people use social media across the world. This translates to 49% social media penetration worldwide. I actively began joined social media around 2010 or let's say 2009, yeah, about 10, 10 or so years ago. Mm -hmm. And the motivation behind it was because I consider that the world has now become a small village and the only way we could see the world out there at this point or even then is through social media. Because mm -hmm. you get to see what's going on around you mm -hmm. through the very rare social media platforms like Facebook because there are always updates on what's happening around. It's not only for friendship, but you also get news updates. You also get to travel the world through social media. So that was the motivation behind it. Uh, Olius joined social media, specifically Facebook, in the year 2009. Yes, that is uh, after high school. Social media is any digital tool that allows users to quickly create and share contents with the public. And like any other thing, social media has both positive and negative effects, or what I would call the two faces. Is social media a good thing? I would say yes and no. To some extent it's a good thing, because we are talking about information age, where information is passing uh, very fast. Uh, and People are getting new information every day and getting it uh, like on the tip of the fingers. To that extent, social media is good. We are also talking about being educational. Like today, everybody has got equal access to knowledge. Uh, you know, gone are the days when your teacher used to know more than you do. As we talk right now, everybody, a student and a teacher, have got almost equal opportunity to get to knowledge. To that extent, social media is very positive. But then there is the other extent that social media now becomes uh, negative. When you start having negative effects of social media, when we cannot function well because of social media, when we start having a psychological disturbance caused by social media, now to that extent, then we can say uh, it is harmful in, in a way. I spend a lot of time on social media. Mm -hmm. I spend a lot of time. Can you spend a day or a week without getting online into social media? <laughs> no, if no. If not, no. how can that affect you? <laughs> I actually cannot spend like uh, the whole day without uh, getting on social media. Be it uh, Facebook, or Twitter, or any other. I will have to. Uh, if I don't, I'll just feel like I'm missing something. There is something that is missing. Yeah, there's something that I've not done. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I've got I've got friends who are also there. And sometimes you see most of most of the conversations, if not the SMS or the direct phone calls, most of the conversations are done uh, online. Facebook is the most popular social media platform, while TikTok and Instagram are the fastest growing social media platform and the commonly used among the teens and youth. Can you really say social media is addictive? Sure, social media is very addictive. And, uh, at what level do we say somebody is now addicted to social media? When you find that, that without social media you have a craving, like uh, you cannot stay for a day or two without getting into social media. And when you don't do that, then uh, you kind of get some effects, like you get too much bored. Uh, you, you, sometimes people would complain of having a headache, feeling that there's something that you're missing, and therefore th there's a craving to go into social media. Studies have shown that excessive use of social media stimulates patterns in the brain that are similar to addiction to some other behavioral addictions. For example, in teens, a study which was done in one of the universities in the U.S. says that teenagers, when they use social media, the kind of circuits that are formed in the brain, perhaps I need to say that every communication that takes place in our lives, in our daily activities, forms a particular pathway of communication in the brain. So the research found out that when a teenager eats chocolate or when a teenager wins money, 
The same circuit pathway is created in the brain of the teenager as when they use social media. And when a pattern has been formed in our brain over and over again, it kind of remains permanent. You just need a trigger and the same circuit is activated. A trigger and the circuit is activated. So when we talk about addiction with social media, then we say it's a behavior that once you have gotten used to it and the reward that it brings, and if that reward is, 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 is pleasurable, you get so attached to it and you want to have that feeling each and every other time. Right now, you see, when I have a problem, I reach out to friends. These are my social media friends. And the help they give can be so overwhelming as compared to the help that even our relatives can give to us. It is important to note that when people are addicted, they really know that they are addicted mm -hmm. and they really accept that they are addicted. But social media is addictive. Mm -hmm. Are social media friends real friends? Social media friends, 90% are not real friends. 10% can be real friends. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because people lie a lot, people are not real on, friend, on, 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 on social media. Someone wants to live a life that someone else lives. Someone forgets their culture and brings a Western culture kind of into them. Mm -hmm. And now they want to show people that now that is them, which is totally uh, not. There are friends that have turned to be family that I just met on social media. And there are friends that I've never seen, but they are like family. They are like, we've known each other for long and we just met on social media. Mm -hmm. But the same social media, there are friends that are fake. Some who are just out there to, like, to monitor your life, see what, what's going on. Yeah, because the only way they can access probably is through your social platforms, yeah. Technology and social media has brought many benefits to the consumers, right from social, education and economic aspects. Most businesses are done online. And you'll only do your business online depending on uh, the number of friends that you have online and the kind of friends that you have online. The more your friends are, actually, even if you are selling something, uh, your, 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 whatever you're selling will reach a bigger, number of, a bigger number of people. In that way, you shall have gained from social media. Uh, currently, there is something that I'm, I'm doing personally as a business I'm, that I'm on, uh, on adventure. It's called the Jamjengo Adventure. The Jamjengo Adventure uh, started from social media. I saw an opportunity on social media where I have friends, and then I asked myself, what can these friends, uh, what can I gain from these, these friends that I have? The bigger following that I have. Then I said, let me try this. Jamjengo Adventures is actually moving on well because of friends that I have on social media. They are backing it up and willingly uh, supporting it. Another thing is uh, we met as friends and uh, came together, started uh, a friend zone kind of thing. The friend zone is doing so well, going on well. We are yet to know each other at a personal level, physically. I started my online business in June 2016, 14th June to be precise. I felt that there was as far as rent is concerned, most of the best spots or the strategic places that one could locate their businesses, the rent is too high. So for a starter, for me then, I felt that the rent was too high, but I badly wanted to start business. So the best next option, I consider that I have friends on social media, I have a free platform on social media, why not open? my page mm -hmm. and start here. Yeah. So mainly because of the financial challenges when starting a business and I also grabbed the opportunity considering that more and more people keep joining social media. On Facebook we are Timeless Kidswear and on Instagram we are at Timeless Kidswear. Yes, and we bring new stock every week so there's always something to look forward to every week. Talking about social media at a, as a person, how much personal information do you release? 
I release the basic information. Like for my case, I, I have my names, the names I use on social, social media, the names on my identification documents, mm -hmm. the photos I upload are my own photos. The updates I give are related to what I do. Actually, like my social media is full of baby outfits, kids fashion, because I believe Social media exposes you to the world, and the world also sees you through social media. What you put on your platforms, let's say Facebook or Instagram, will tell people more about you than before they meet you. So as far as giving information, I give genuine information, but not too much information, because also there's privacy part side of it. Yeah, you can't go exposing everything that you do on social media. Sometimes when we get on and we start disclosing, uh, issues about ourselves, we are forgetting that it's not a safe place. Sure. So there is an extent of self-disclosure that you don't take to social media. So be very deliberate, use it actively and consciously if you must, but if, 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 you, if you don't have to, you don't have to. People like posting on social media with seemingly extravagant lifestyle. Do you get affected? I really don't get affected with that because uh, you know, on social media, if you look at the kind of life someone else lives, people live actually different lives on social media. People lie a lot on social media. Mm -hmm. So if you concentrate on uh, how extravagant someone is on social media, it will affect you as an individual. So I tend not to uh, concentrate much on that because I know it will bring a negative effect on me. Like, I'll ask myself, why am I not owning a car that the other person is owning? Why am I not owning a, a a Porsche house that the other person is, 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 is owning. Cyberbullying is a situation where somebody is intimidated or somebody is uh, demeaned using uh, a social media platform. So it is just like bullying, the normal bullying that we know, but now it is taken to social media. The, 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 the biggest effect that that has is that, that that feeling of shame that, you know, it has been taken to social media. So there is always that feeling of everybody has seen it. Our, the psychological impacts would include uh, things like social bullying, which would cause anxiety. Uh, sometimes they would cause emotional pain, anger, there is a lot to do with the, the, the emotional part of it. But then there is also the other effects that we get, especially when we are using the, the, what we call the blue screens. Blue screens include uh, your phone, they include what you get in your, in your computer and all that. So studies have shown that these have got a lot of effects on, uh, on us psychologically. One, uh, people who use blue screens for a long time are more vulnerable to depression. And actually, one of the signs that is being now studied for depression is the use of screens for too long. That people who are depressed kind of get into, get into the screens more time compared to people who are not uh, depressed. So it is one sign of depression. Uh, the other effect is the effect it has on sleep. Studies are showing that the more you use blue screens, especially during the night as you're going to bed, the longer it will take for you to sleep. What happens when you don't sleep well? There's an aspect of our development, there's an aspect of the rejuvenation of our bodies, and, and, and just an aspect of having our mental, mental health in the right place that has a lot to do with sleep. So when adolescents miss out on sleep, because they spend much time on social media, we expect them at some point to be depressed, we expect them not to be able to self-regulate properly emotionally, adding to the fact that the, the prefrontal cortex, part of their brain that is supposed to also help with self-regulation has not matured enough. So we have them even having a double problem, self-regulating their emotions. An adolescent who doesn't sleep well at night would have more difficulty coping with situations. If they have faced a difficult situation, it would be double threatening to them as compared to one who sleeps better at night. Even when you get a like, it, 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 it makes you happy. 
What does our brain do when something makes us happy? It rewards us. And so we are jovial, we are happy. The more we get it, the more happy we become. But then what happens when you're not getting the likes on social media? Or nobody's commenting on your post on social media? Especially if they used to comment on your posts or if you used to get so many likes, you would feel insufficient. Something is not right with me. How are people, people looking at me? I, it, it's a fact that we, we care a lot about image and how people respond to the image that we put out there. So for the young person, if they do not get the likes on social media, what does that do? especially on their self-esteem. It breaks them, it lowers their self-esteem. And when one has lowered self-esteem, then, then they are, uh, they're already vulnerable to so many uh, self-harming or, or uh, problem behaviors because they don't have a place where they stand with assertiveness and they lose their ability to be assertive. When you're talking about the use of social media. There is a description today that we use. Uh, we call it uh, the, the, the gadget bedroom culture. What that means is that we are building a culture where everybody is using a screen. Your, the, your small children are playing with a gadget. Uh, your father is on TV. The mother is using the laptop. So what that means is that socially you're not connected. Uh, it reduces contact. You know, that human contact where I see you, I see what you're doing emotionally, I can, I can kind of feel you. And those important cues that we get, social cues that we get, are, for example, things to do with touch, all right? Things to do with uh, the nonverbal communication that is very important for us. So to, some, to a bigger extent, social media is reducing that. Social media has impacts on children as they grow in all aspects of their development, as explained by the psychologist. So with all the effects of social media, you can imagine the extent of the distress or the impact that it can negatively have on adults. So bring it to a child who still has a, 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 a developing brain, whose social skills are not fully developed yet and you can imagine how much destruction that would cause to a child. Children are developing at every part of their lives. We all are, but children are at a critical point of development, both cognitively, mentally, socially, physically, and social media impacts on all those areas of development. For a child to develop socially, they need to be allowed to socially interact with the community around them, with their environment in a productive way. So if time is spent on social media, and I can tell you for a fact that there is content online for children, that if they start on it, it will be a struggle to be pulling them away from those gadgets. And when they are not having time or spending time to interact with the environment, they are not growing socially. So we'll end up with children or we'll end up with a generation of children who are not able to handle uh, pressure or stressors outside within the society. They don't know how to relate. They don't know how to resolve conflict. They don't know how to exist amongst real people. And what do they do when they go out and they can't handle that pressure? They come and hide behind their cameras. Again, who does your child talk to on social media? I mean, it's a platform where we make relationships. And to a larger extent, you are not able to control who your child talks to or relates to or follows. Because if they're following someone, they're modeling that behavior. If your parent has, if you're an absent parent and your child is on social media and they find somebody who is present, remember that person is present full time because they are posting all the time and you're absent who, who are they modeling they are modeling that guy on social media and other times you don't even know who that is so he has a, a very huge impact socially on children cognitively 
the brain of the child to grow, then there are interactions that are supposed to be put at the disposal of the child. They have to interact with, with, with color, with people, with, with objects in, in the society because the brain takes in that and puts meaning to it and, 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 and it becomes part of their cognitive development and that becomes difficult for their motor skills to, 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 to develop, that is their physical. Then they have to be engaged in activities. But you see social media, because of the hype and the excitement that it brings, it keeps us in one place. And so we are not even physically engaging. So if, if you take a child and keep them down for, for long enough, they would lose the ability to, to, to use their motor skills properly. Social media has two faces. However, we commonly focus on the positive, ignoring the many detrimental negative impacts of social media. Some of the negative impacts of social media are felt either emotionally, psychologically and socially. When it comes to emotions, you know, social media has got uh, different kind of effects. Of course, social media is used for entertainment and therefore emotionally, as you're getting entertained, it's getting better and better. But we're also looking at uh, somewhere where there is a lot of social bullying. So generating a lot of anger. Like if you remember in our last elections, people said, you know, uh, people went into social media and fought in social media. Because this is a place where I can call you any word that I want and it goes all around. So what happens to you when you finally find it? You can see how people become uh, insensitive in social media. Like um, currently we have people who want to commit suicide. They rate it on social media and you can see the comments that come, very insensitive comments. So what that is doing to this person is you cannot see it because you don't have contact. But actually it is affecting the person wherever they are. There is also a lot of media today, especially when it comes to uh, taking of videos and all that, that is not well censored. Nobody. Uh, looks at what is there and what effect it will have on others. So you, you, you find very insensitive comments, uh, you'll find uh, very insensitive videos and therefore affecting people emotionally. People have lost jobs just from what they post on social media platforms. Take an example of Pauline Joroge, a lady who lost her appointment with the tourism ministry due to her Facebook post. Some have been arrested and charged following their post, and yet sadly, some have also lost their lives due to cyberbullying. Youths should be keen on what they post on social media because the common saying is the internet never forgets. Whatever statement you write today shall still be there five, ten years to come. Mm -hmm. Whatever photos you post, one day you might be going to look for a job, but that nude photo you had posted when you are half naked might have an impact on your future job. So, so sh the youth should, con should always have in mind that social media must be used wisely because whatever you post, the internet never forgets it. It will still come back to haunt you. You use it wisely, it will come back to help you to your advantage at that time of need in future. Mm -hmm. Yes. Even before you put anything down on social media, because it will go to the whole world, you know, the moment you're uh, on, 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 on your laptop on your phone doing the typing, you're not typing it to yourself. You're not typing it to two people here. You're typing it so that it goes everywhere. Lest we forget the many cases of teenage girls being lured online for parties and other cases of child trafficking online. How do you know that you're addicted to social media? I mean, how do you know that it's a problem? Social media is now a problem to me as a person. And let me just highlight one is when you're preoccupied, you have obsessive thinking about social media and what you're going to put there. You spend time trying to build content, content for the social media. You, you, you purposefully dress up to, to, to go and, and be set up in a, in, in a place that is not in your reality of living for social media. 
when you're preoccupied, then you know that's a problem. When you start getting into trouble with people over what you're posting, getting into trouble with your family over the time you're spending on social media, then you know you have a problem. When you know you have a problem and you have said, I'm going to reduce, I'm going to stop, and you're still not able to do that, then you know there's a problem. When you're not able to be productive and functional in your other places of responsibility uh, because of the time you're spending on social media, you know you have a problem. When you get distressed emotionally or psychologically, if I may say, because you've not been able to access internet, you've not been on social media, when you lose your phone and the first thing you think about is not communication with your bosses or your, or your, your family or your friends, but being out of social media and, and you're so distressed about it, you know you have a problem. For those who are teens, uh, the teenagers and children outside there, and maybe you have found yourself uh, addicted to social media, or you're finding yourself in a situation where you cannot get rid of, 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 of your gadgets, first of all, seek help. Don't, uh, don't deny that you have a problem, because that is a great problem. Number two, don't get yourself in a situation where there is too much pressure set on you. Know that you're not obligated by anyone. You're not obligated to be liked. And people who like you on social media might not like you genuinely. They might not like you for what you really are or whom you really are. So also set limits for yourself. How much do I need to put on social media? How much do I need to expose myself to social media? Think about the consequences that might be there on your life as a person before you put anything on social media. And then, of course, always set rules on social media. Set yourself rules. Say where, where you need to go to, where you don't want to go to, how much time do you want to spend on social media, how much time do you want to spend socializing on one-to-one -one with others. First, I'd mentioned the child cannot get these gadgets out of the blues. So you have a role as a parent to provide these gadgets, allow exposure to internet at a time that is age appropriate. Many times, because we are absent for work or studies, we, we, we live in that era when it's a fast era for most parents. We, we tend to compensate for our absence with gadgets. To give a child a phone and there is internet, you have exposed them to everything on, on internet. Because they will scroll and they, children are very fast to grasp. Within no time they're able to, to navigate so many platforms, so many pages within the internet. Number two, a parent needs to educate the child. Let them know what's about social media, how to use it, how to avoid, how, you know, what is cyberbullying, how to respond, and have an environment that your child and yourself can talk about the challenges, the information they access on social media. And, and, and you'll be able to, like, mentor them on how to deal with social media. Number three is supervise the use of social media. Which sites are your child uh, visiting? What, what kind of communication do they have on social media? Who are their friends on social media? What kind of information do they post on social media? The fourth and which is very important is be the model of good behavior when it comes to social media as a parent. While you are supervising, your child will be snooping on you. What does mommy or daddy do on social media? Which kind of information does that your mommy access on social media? How much time do they spend on social media? To technology, we can instantly and constantly communicate to people across the world. However, it does not tell us what to say, when and how to say it. The ball is on our court, and especially as parents. 
we have a role to play in order to save the coming generation as far as social media impacts are concerned. Maslin Odero, Hope Channel, Kenya.